General Eisenhower's battle headquarters in the ancient city of Reims was the business-like setting for Germany's unconditional surrender. And just before the delegates arrived, a few out of the millions of beaten German soldiers were trudging past the building. The Allied officers who took their places on either side of Eisenhower's chief of staff, Lieutenant General Bedell Smith, included Admiral Burra and Major General Suslaparov. A terrific moment for them all. The German delegates were General Admiral von Friedeburg, who had previously surrendered to Monte, General Jodl, German Army Chief of Staff, and his aide, Major Oxenius. It was naturally a brief ceremony, and after Jodl had signed on the dotted line, the other signatories completed the capitulation of Reims at 2.41 a.m. True, Jodl made a statement about the sufferings of the German armed forces and people, and hoped that the victor will treat them with generosity, but the surrender was unconditional, signed with a gold pen by the Allies and an ersatz pen by the Huns, and as Eisenhower demonstrated afterwards, that spelt victory. In January 1943, the late President Roosevelt and Premier Churchill met in Casablanca. There they pronounced the formula of unconditional surrender for the Axis powers. In Europe, that formula has now been fulfilled. The Allied force, which invaded Europe on June 6, 1944, has, with its great Russian allies and forces advancing from the south, utterly defeated the Germans by land, sea, and air. This unconditional surrender has been achieved by teamwork. Teamwork not only among all the Allies participating, but among all the services, land, sea, and air. To every subordinate that has been in this command of almost five million Allies, I owe debt of gratitude that can never be repaid. The only repayment that can be made to them is a deep appreciation and lasting gratitude of all free citizens of all the United Nations.